protection from government. 30,000 Haredi Jews, followers of a variety of strict Orthodox traditions, live around here in Stamford Hill in Hackney, London. The authorities are worried about some of their private boys' schools, which, contrary to the law, are not registered. Current and former community members estimate there are between a dozen and 20 significantly sized illegal schools that are uninspected and offer a narrow syllabus, teaching up to a thousand boys. Now, one of the oldest principles about how England regulates its schools is that parents should have the right to educate their own children according to their own faith and <laughs> culture. A second principle, though, is that no child should be given an education so narrow that they can't do what they'd like to do in adulthood. And sometimes in religious communities, whether they be Muslim, Christian, or here in Stamford Hill, Jewish, those principles clash. We met several former pupils who have left the community and feel their education in the illegal schools was very poor. They're anonymous because their families would be upset by their participation in this report. Despite growing up in London, English is a second language to these men. Their words are spoken by actors with similar accents. Basically, just imagine a school of like 200, 300 years ago. It's just the same thing. We spoke in Yiddish. We only used Yiddish. Haredi parents tend to educate their girls in relatively mainstream schools, but lots want a religious education in Yiddish for their boys. They want a primary education before the age of 13, with only an hour or so of secular study each day, the rest spent in scriptural study. We weren't taught any geography, because why? If we stay in this enclave all of our lives, why do we need to know geography? We weren't taught any science. Any other subjects other than English and math, we weren't taught at all. But even English and math was only the very, very minimum for a very, very sophisticated. Why I'm actually struggling now with my job. Their parents and teachers gave them a highly intellectual, very, very sophisticated education for the life that they planned for them to lead. Now, they've rejected all that and they've gone off into the world outside. So they have to start again. They have to acquire an education that suits the world outside. As soon as and this head teacher of a registered Haredi school feels his education was excellent. My experience of yeshiva, whilst it was unregistered, was overwhelmingly positive. I attended yeshiva from the age of 14, and I spent the majority of the day study, studying biblical and Talmudical texts. Now, you should know that biblical and Talmudical studies... ...England, which offer a broad curriculum. But lots of Haredi parents use illegal schools precisely because they don't want a broad curriculum. And they fear that if the illegal schools were to register, they would need to become less specialised, or even forced to close by the Department for Education. Well, we're joined now by Jonathan Arkush, the President of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. But first, Chris Cook is here. Chris, you've got statements from various bodies. Hello, we need help. Ah! First of all, starting with the Department for Education, which is the, the sort of ultimate regulator of the whole system. To do yeah, sorry, I think not entirely unfairly. Um, they say that unregistered schools are illegal and unsafe, and we are taking unprecedented and direct action against them across the board to protect children. They sound very similar to the offset statement. We know that in January 2016, with the support of the Secretary of State, Ofsted established a new task force to identify, inspect, and investigate unregistered schools. And that since November last year, the Chief Inspector has commissioned the inspection of eight unregistered schools between its covers, uh, borders. Yeah. 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 On the user number 807-173-5555. Uh, this is the uh, first new Noddy adventure in 46 years. It's published later this month. It's called Noddy and the Farmyard Muddle. And it's been specially written to celebrate 60 years of Thailand's best love character. Uh, the new story features all your favourites, folks. Big Ears, Mr. Plod, Tessie Bear and Bumpy Dog. But the Gollywogs are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> 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 She's the granddaughter of Noddy creator Enid Blyton. 
She says she's tried to stay true to the original tales, but didn't want to stick with characters out of sync with people's tolerances today. The original books featured Gollywogs, who lived in Golly Town. Mr. Golly was one of Noddy's best friends and ran Toyman's Garage and looked after Noddy's amazing car. But there were also villainous Gollies, who were rude to Noddy's friends and later stole his car. Noddy fans apparently feel that removing the Gollies from this latest book is unnecessary. The stories, they say, have to be measured against the historical context in which they were first written. At the time Ina Blyton was writing, Gollywogs were not considered racist in any shape or form. They also say it's not right to tamper with Blyton's work when you can still buy original copies of Helen Bannerman's book, Little Black Sambo, for example. Little, be little Black a Sambo. Years ago, uh, you'll remember this, we talked about it a lot on the show, there were calls for the 1931 cartoon Tintin in the Congo to be released. Tintin in the Congo. Because of the hideous racial prejudice between its colours. Uh, Borders eventually moved their copies from the kids' department to the adult graphic novel section. Uh, fair enough, I guess. My major great gripe, though, with Noddy and the Farmyard Mother is not so much that the gollies have gone, but that there are now no colours of character, uh, no, ca no characters of colour gracing his pages at all. Although I know in the TV series, I'll say on Milkshake, there is a black character there, but, but not in this book. Um, I'll start with you, Tracy, because I know you are something of a Noddy expert. It's so. right over it, yeah, yes. I have a three year old. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, there's a character called Dina, and, and she's a character of colour. She's a lovely girl, and apparently she's been taken out of the book. Yeah, not there. Not, it's in this, not in this Not in this new one. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's odd, isn't it? I think if it causes offence, then yes, it has to be looked at. I think it has to be taken in its context. But you're turning it into kind of Richard Curtis's Notting Hill world, where there are, are no uh, characters of colour in there at all. So you're, you're sort of... Anna, Anna, you know, it's, it's, it's an odd one. I and mean, by this context, should we be teaching Oliver Twist, you know, with Fagin in it? Should we be looking at how... Yeah. Um, dialogue in the Merchant of Venice. Uh, you know, Venice. Well, I suppose the difference is here that this is a. Character of Venice. You wouldn't, you wouldn't illustrate uh, children, but there were racist images in, in literature. Oh, so we didn't have a flick for the book in the break, didn't we? So what do you think? Um, I think taking out Mr. Gully and replacing him with a white guy called um, Mr. Sparks oh. is not really the major concern. Right. I think the major concern is taking out all characters of colour. Yes. That's what I think is the concern. Because I can see taking out uh, the Gully world, that, that's a little derogatory. Yeah. People, I, I understand why they'll take it out. Yeah. But taking out all characters of colour, people will think that's racist. Now they can introduce new characters of colour. In, that are not there again. in a positive way, with new names in a positive way, that would work. Then there we go. Not affect people. We end the show in a chord, which is no bad thing. Makes a change. Now that's the, all we have time for today, folks. Trish is on her way. Our first day means I'm going to say goodbye to this lot, which means Ray. Great to see you, as per usual. It really is. Can't wait. Genuinely can't wait for the start of your next adventure, Northern Wilderness, BBC Two, this Sunday evening. And don't forget Ray's one man show as well, as the details easily found online. Tracy and Tommy, nice one. See you back here tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, the panel. Ladies and gentlemen, the panel.